let me talk with you of mockingbirds and cedar trees, of backyard games by evening's glow. I'll share with you my vanished youth and dreams we both should know. If I'm not painting or working, I get this very restless kind of condition. I just have to do it. I've always done it, and it's part of who I am. But provoking feeling, this is really what I want. That's what I want to touch. As dusk came to the house, she pulled the young girl aside and shared with her its many secrets. I'm just absolutely electrified by these old houses. There is such a profound level of subjectivity with that object. And that's both the blessing and the curse. The blessing is that it just fuels every aspect of my uh, creative mind. There is also a, a dark side to them. And it's perhaps that contrast that makes it just a magnetic image for me. Late in the afternoon, they would sit out back of the house, waiting patiently for the coming of evening and the laughter of yesterday's children. The writing that will appear on work sometimes comes as the picture is, is forming itself. And I'll have a, a mental insight, a line, a paragraph, even a word will come to me in association with an image. And I'll just write it right on the board. I, I just don't want it to fly away. The writing instinct and the picture-making instinct have long ago merged. One has fueled the other. And her father came to her in a dream as she lay sleeping under the trees and his presence calmed the angry night wind. I remember my childhood as being fraught with a lot of struggle and difficulties. Issues of estrangement, issues of decay, issues of fantasy. For all of the right reasons, those emotions have helped me. He whispered to the bird his melancholy song, an ode to love forever gone. They've helped me shape my craft. Pictures become terribly autobiographic at times. As my mother spoke, she slowly raised her hand toward her face, as if to confirm her very existence. I've even been admonished by some, don't, don't get naked here. You don't have to parade all this stuff. Everything was said with extreme caution and then complete silence. But the dark world is a, uh, for me, a, a very fascinating world. And when I paint and when I write, that's just where I wanna go. I was very fortunate to have the teachers I had when I was at Auburn. When I left college and went to New York, it was essentially to look at art. I wanted to taste that world a while. And so I got a job with the Metropolitan Museum as a guard and later as a night watchman. I would finish my rounds and, and I might have, you know, 20 minutes left on my break time. So I'd go into the galleries and flip on all the lights and just sit there and feast on every one of these works. And those artists really touched my soul. They communicated values to me. And it was probably the singular, most intensely felt learning experience I ever had.
When I start a painting, I'll do everything I can to avoid starting it. I have to bite the bullet. Look at that sea of white canvas. Maybe have a glass of wine or two. And then when I hit it, it's like walking a wonderful high wire without a net. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just an exhilarating feeling. And to not know where you're going is the most exciting part about it. You let yourself go to the point that the world you are inventing really becomes your world. And one becomes lost in or absorbed by that creative condition that you're oblivious to things in the real world. This house is an image I've painted before. I've seen it before. Recently went to it again. What I recall most clearly about the deserted house in the snow was its fragile sense of presence. Standing there, gutted and abused, it seemed to beg the approaching night for another morning. A deserted house, a dying house, is a haunting image. It takes me back to a time in my youth where I made decisions that were not necessarily in my best interest. If I don't draw them, if I don't paint them, those associations and those connections could, I believe, have the better of me. It's a purging. It is a way of washing. On that day in December, I experienced the sheer emptiness of that once full and nurturing place. The echo of life within those walls like yesterday's dawn. At the end of the day, when they put away their quills and brushes, they realized anew that art is but mere illusion. I do get disappointed when a picture is done. I've learned to let go because it's not the physical thing that, that really is important. It, it's, it's what went into making that piece in which I have been totally submerged in this wonderful state of creative ecstasy. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm.